All right, let's um, get into sussing out the code and what we're going to do from there. So we've got the document working, and if we launch our HTML um, from last time, right, right. there you go. We've got that. We've managed to make a gold page. So what we're going to do next is we actually want to put on like a home and about us navigation stuff. So we'll put it in nav link, and now I know nav doesn't actually necessarily come up in every browser, but it comes up definitely in Chrome. Um, Internet Explorer is, is an issue, but because Internet Explorer is getting rapidly updated, this particularly with Microsoft because we're in a new browser, it's rumored to be quite good. Um, don't really think it's an issue worth worrying about at this stage. Um, so we're going to start a link, so a href, so an anchor, hyperlink reference, so index. HTML. So that's the start of the link. This is the file we're linking it to. So if you wanted to link it to an external website, that's what you use with the website. That's the word we click on to make it go somewhere, and that's the end of the link. So that way nothing else is included in that link. So if I had a second word here, and I hadn't closed that, um, then this word I could click on this would also take me the same way. So I'm just going to duplicate that. So, oops, I'm going to need a fourth one. Um, this here, index.html, is referring to this file. So if we had made another file that we put our contact information in called a contact.html, we would change that there and change it to contact. So um, I think we'll do a gallery. Let's see that case off. And we'll do that one. So we've got that there. So to bring across here, um, we want to do some styling. So first of all, um, I'm going to do something for body. Right. So body is basically all this content down here. It's pretty much the main everything in the website. In Chrome, it comes with the default of the margin. So um, I'll save this, and before I do anything, if we look here and I'll refresh that, there we go, we've got our link, and if I F12 and look at the developer tools, um, we can see body, yeah, I think I've changed the background colour to something a little bit easier for looking at. Right. Um, if we go into body, we can see that there's clearly the blue strip, which is the navigation when we highlight down, but body's also got this orange strip around it, um, and it is this margin of 8, so if you scroll down here, this is really helpful when you're ho hovering over elements to see what it's doing. So, like, why is that not able to go, you know, any further left and things like that. Um, these developer tools are super handy to do those things with. And then, if we look up here, this is the code that's associated with it. So we can see margin eight and display block. So that's the defaults that come in from Chrome that have that. So we're going to get rid of those default that default of um, margin 8. Uh, so if we go to margin there, and just put 0 px, that'll stop that because if we wanted our navigation bar to go all the way to the edge of the screen, it can't, can't well, it couldn't can't, um, until I've done this change. So we want our text to sit all centre. So you look here, they're in a line, they're nice and pretty, but we we'll probably want them over here, as most navigation is. So if I go nav and I go text align center, what we're doing is we've taken this whole group of navs and we're saying all the text will learn up we want it to align with the center. If I had said nav A, which is saying in the navigation I want the A link to text align center, what you'll probably find is that they all sit center on top of each other because they're all going to the same center rather than the group setting the whole group to centre. So let's save that and refresh. There you go, we've got that centre. Um, and we probably want to get rid of these underlines as well because that comes as default with a link. So if we go in here and I do set this and I go um, like uh, link no Right. Um, 
you'll get a few sites that will pop up straight away. W3 Skills is pretty good, it has pretty simplistic information. Stack Overflow is pretty good as well. A very good one, but it can be a bit technical at times, particularly for if you're a bit pretty new to this. Um, so if there's any other ones down here that are good ones. Um, the other two ones that can be quite good are CSS Tricks and uh, Mozilla Developer. But we'll go here and we'll have a look through. So we've got styling links, this is to do with colour, this is to do with visiting, and then it says here, text decoration, none. You can normally go try it yourself here if you actually want to see what it is because you're not intrinsically going to know oh, that's what gets rid of that. That one here is going to get rid of the other one. Um, but it does. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can Google search pretty much anything but chuck CSS in front of it if you want to find it for that particular coding language. Um, right, so if we go back and refresh our save, there you go, the link's gone. Um, we may want our navigation to be further apart, not have them all crammed together. So um, if we go display, we need a display type to make changes to how it's laid out. Display line and line block. And then I can say width. You can specify a number like a, a fixed number and it will always stay that way or you can do it by percentage so as the screen gets bigger and smaller it will shrink. I think in this instance that a number is perfectly fine and then maybe how the margin space in between is a better way to go. But there we go. So now as I hover over nav and I do a drop down and go under nav A we can see that whole element fills up nav. If I click on that and I turn off the width and then we can see that's, that's what it was previously. But if I turn back on that bit of code that we just added, we can see there that's how much space it occupies. Um, right, I probably want to change the colour. So, colour spout in American. This is the actual colour of the text. Um, and I'm just going to say white. It's a pretty easy colour. And I will then say I want a. A, like a strip in the background, like a whole strip all the way across to be filled in black. So that's text. Um, so under nav, so if we highlight, nav is that whole strip, and I want that whole strip to be black, so it makes sense to put the background colour on that background colour black. There are a few ways you can do your colours. You can do it with a hexadecimal colour. So if you have something like Photoshop, and when you're choosing a colour, and there in that colour palette view, it has down the bottom left hand corner there's a hexadecimal colour, so it'll be like a six digit number with a hash on the end. So you put that in for the hash, or you can do an RGBA value. Um, but you guys can all kind of Google and play with those. So refresh that, boom. There we go, we've got that. I apologise for making a boom noise. Um, now there's probably a few things you want to adjust for that. Do I want to have a thin strip uh, hard up against the top of the browser? If I get rid of this. That's what I want to look like, which is fine, but it's not as pretty as it could be. So maybe we'll bring that down, maybe make the bar a bit thicker, maybe make the text a bit bigger. Okay. So let's work on that. So we probably want to move the whole nav bar down. Um, so we go, so to locate it, we do position relative. So we go to the positioning style. And let's see if this just works. Top, and we'll push it down by a so it's pushed it down top. Um, and if we want to make this wider, rather than setting like a height for it, we can. Um, we can also add padding. Padding's like spacing, but when you have a background colour, it actually shows up. So we could do padding dash top, padding dash bottom, where you can just do straight padding which adds space everywhere, or you can do padding with two values. So the first value is the top bottom. So if I say I want the top bottom to have uh, 15 pixels, and the second value to have none, because I want it to stay just like that, that will then give me that result. So there we go, we can, start, we can see that we're starting to make progress, and things are starting to look a little bit nicer. Um, Probably one of the only other changes I'll make with this first step with getting things set up is I'll do some margin 
uh, between the woods to space them out from each other a little bit more and we'll change the font so first of all we'll do the margin so we want each word here to be spaced further apart from each other so if I go margin and we can do that 2w thing again so the top bottom we don't really want any margin so that's fine so we just do it zero to it and then for the left and the right um, we want that to be I don't know we'll try something like three percent because then it will scale as we go so if I redo that and then if I F12 you can see you can see it's done the effect of spacing it but if we do this it kind of helps you there so the blue part is here has has set the width of the actual A link and that orange part there if we scroll down is the margin. That's the margin. That's the actual element. That's the margin. And obviously it's on all of them. So if I shrink the window, oops, oh, what we'll find is see that number's actually got smaller because it was three percent. Now regardless of how wide you make that screen, three percent is still three percent. It's obviously just three percent of a smaller number or a smaller width. Um, so it's back up to 38 where it was 20, 26 just before. Alright, next thing is we'll do a font. Probably the, the quickest, easiest way to do a font when starting would be just a Google font. You can do a few set standard fonts, but I find if you use a Google font, you know for sure that it's going to work because basically it accesses, the website accesses Google's uh, font site and then imports the font from there, which doesn't really slow down your website much. So if I look up Google font, you go to Google font site, and then there'll be a whole raft of different fonts um, that will pop up shortly. Here we go. Um, and what we want to do is scroll down and until we find something nice. And I know if I scroll up a little bit, I'll find something. There we go. This one here, which is it's nice, but it's also quite different to a standard font. And so we want to go from that. So we've got this thing here. It's called Quick Use. So this is what I use. We go down here. This tells you roughly how long it's going to take. So 15 is not not much in terms of your load time for the speed um, it's going to affect for loading your website onto someone else's computer. Um, so we go add import. So standard is when you put in your HTML. We've got an external style sheet so we would put it in there. So we use the add import. So we go to this line here. Control C. Go back here. I always chuck up my first line. Um, any fonts that we do. Reason being, oops, I'll scroll back reason being is that if I wanted to use that, say if I chucked it at the bottom and then I tried to apply the style here, because I hadn't read down the code from top to bottom and said, oh that's where I'm going to import this particular font, that says the font family there, um, because it didn't know it existed in the first place, it won't successfully import it. Right, and then if we go integrate your fonts to your CSS, so that's how we actually apply it to something, because otherwise currently we've got, oh this is where we import the font from, but we haven't actually said oh, I want that font to be on this. So I put it on the nav, eh? so we just paste that, save that, we go back to our website, refresh, and there we go. We've got our nice fonts, and like I said, we want to probably scale up the size, so logically it's actually called font-size. So let's go back here, nav A, uh, font size. Um, you can do it by pixels, you can do it by another, uh, by percentage, or you can do it by um, EM. Um, what they are is EM and percentage tend to scale a bit, where the pixels is just a fixed size. But in this sense, because we've got these, the width for these already fixed, there's no reason why we can't fix the size of the size for here. So if I say 20 pixels, save. There we go. So we saw it got a bit bigger. Probably not a whole lot bigger. Here's another nice trick where you can do styling, which is why it makes this quite good. So if I click down here where the 20 to the X is, and I just press, I click on it, and then I press the up key, it lets me upsize it. So I can say, actually, I quite like 30. That looks quite nice. This obviously doesn't say, because as soon as I refresh it, disappears. It goes back to where it was. But that means that I could have just. I've been able to test basically each each little individual size change and see if that looks well, makes me happy. With and so there you go.
that's the end of that tutorial. We'll start making changes from here.